Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with the next part of the Blood Angel story, Dark Tide. The nomadic populace of the Lycios had never imagined horrors like those they now faced. The last of their crawler caravans still strove to stay ahead of the monstrous tidal wave that cursed their world. While struggling to stave off the tyrannid threat, it was into this desperate battle that the flesh terrors plunged, like the angels of the emperor himself. Gabriel Seth had not hesitated when Commander Dante requested his aid in the defense of Baal. In the Valerius company of blood angels, Seth hoped to find salvation for his flesh terrors. For too many years, his chapter had suffered disgrace and suspicion from their allies. That many of the worst atrocities laid at the Flesh Terror's door were true did little, little to quell the chapter master's anger. Seth knew firsthand the ruinous effect of the red thirst and the black rage could have upon his otherwise noble battle brothers. It was a madness that ran like poison through the very veins of his chapters, companies. And only by the spilling of blood could it be sated for a time. These were the thoughts that haunted Seth as he ordered his fleet to Lysios and the relief of the defenders there. As the flotilla of crimson warships raced across the void towards the dirty green world, augurs glimpsed the broken outlines of once great cities beneath the swirling storm of clouds and the swarm of bile ships clustered close to its upper atmosphere. Even from this height, they could see the great wave that washed endlessly across the world, drawn in the gravitational wake of the moon Ixoi. Seth had been briefed on the wave and the populace that raced ahead of its crushing might. From orbit, the flesh terrors could also clearly see the Lysios solar array, the planet's lifeline to the power of the Magno Victorium, Victrium, which the Tyranids had so far ignored. The relay had a secondary importance to Dante's plans to recapture the system, as it had to remain intact if the planets were to be restored once the Tyranids had been defeated. With these orders in mind, several flesh terror vessels broke away from their main fleet to establish a defensive perimeter around the massive orbital structure. Vox Capture confirmed that a handful of defenders had escaped into low orbit aboard the last transports left on Lysios, while others had managed to break away from the melee and return to the immense nomad land ships, escaping out of the ruined cities. In their wake, the immense tidal wave had scoured the battlefield, consuming all in its path for a time, at least. The defenders believed that the battle over and gave thanks to their gods for vanquishing these vile invaders from the void. However, their relief was to be short-lived. Of the swarms caught up in the wave, most had survived their alien physiology proof against drowning and the crushing weight of water. As the tsunami moved on across the surface of Lysios, the swarms emerged from the waters, scattered and depleted, but still very much a threat. Now, the surviving nomads were once again racing ahead of the wave, those that had thought to escape into the void had found their retreat blocked by the orbiting Xenos ships, 
and had been forced to rejoin their land-bound fellows. This time, though, the defenders were not running from the Tyranids, but towards them. The creatures, disgorged by the passing of the wave, massed along the nomad trails encircling Lysios, his northern hemisphere, trapping the Imperials between the wave behind and the beasts ahead. Seth called up pit captures of the world below, looking for a place to bring the foe to battle. The wave was moving too fast. The defenders were too few. The ground ahead of them, too open. Considering the speed of their progress, the chapter master gauged it would be only a few short hours before the defenders' convoy reached the Xenos hordes. The window of attack would be small, and the risks significant. However, this was exactly the kind of warfare that space marines excelled at. Quickly considering his tactical data, Gabriel Seth decided upon a mobile insertion with a fast-moving strike force. He would come down right on top of the survivors, matching their speed and forming an armored cordon around them moments before they met the oncoming Tyranid swarms. The Flesh Terror's fleet thundered into orbit, smashing a ragged hole through the cloud of hanging bioships. Within moments, waves of attack craft fell away from their hulls, screaming down through the sore, spore-choked atmosphere. The Flesh Terrors spread out to shadow the Nomad's convoy. From the vista domes of their crawlers, the Lysites stared as the crimson-armored squadrons descended. The surviving Sisters of Battles opened their tank top hatches, looked up at the Space Marines, and offered up prayers of thanks to the God Emperor. From the underside of Thunderhawk transports, Rhino and Predator tanks came crashing down onto the algae-slicked surface. Their tracks churned through the muck as they accelerated hard, swiftly matching speed with the convoy. Overhead, the ramps of storm ravens yawned open and assault marines leapt out to soar through the air above the survivors. Within the space of minutes, an escort of flesh terror tanks, flyers, and airborne infantry had surrounded the ragged imperial caravan. Up ahead, shadows crawled within the briny ruins, and thousands of eyes turned toward the approaching convoy. The Living Wall the ruins shook with a thunder of hundreds of roaring engines. Scores of massive nomad crawlers formed the center of the convoy, the last survivors of the Lysite populace. At their heart rumbled the Solarium, a huge vehicle layered in arcane technology that provided the nomads with their only terrestrial link to the magnovitrium relay in orbit. Once there had been five such vehicles, each considered sacred. Now only one remained, a precious relic that the Lysites could not afford to lose. In the crawler's shadow, Dozens of Adepta Sororitas transports roared down the brine-slick streets. These were the battered remains of the contingent of the Order of the Sacred Rose. Around them, the flesh terror tanks 
tore through the ruins of the Lycios cityscape. Overhead, squadrons of storm ravens shadowed the vehicles, their pilots relaying auger echoes of the alien horde massed upon the horizon. Aboard the storm raven death blow, Gabriel Seth assessed the enemy and traded Vox communiques with the rest of the convoy. Nomad elders mumbled and cursed from their crawlers, while Sister Superior Amity, Canonus's Magna Grace, Grace's successor, gave a cold assessment of their situation. If the convoy were to have any hope, they would need to punch clean through the swarm that barred their path. Only then, with the enemy temporarily scattered, could evacuation be considered. Even so, reckoned Seth with a scowl, time and the enemy numbers would be against them. This was going to be tight. There you go. Setting up for the next part, which is... The Dead Sea. Until next time. Bye.